I'm Polly Sayer and welcome to The Sheer Luck Show. Today we have a lot of fashion for you, from the key transitional pieces you need in your wardrobe with India Cardona, plus a serious new season High Street Hall with me. Plus we are chatting about how to be healthy at this time of year, all things hair and much more. But first, let me introduce you to our wonderful guests. I'm joined by CEO of Folk Social, Rachel Ingram, hair sensation and founder of Cellui, Anissa Soika, plus nutritionist and podcast host, Sarah Ann Macklin. Welcome, ladies. It's so lovely to have you on the sofa today. How is everyone? So nice to see you. Great. Yeah, and you girls. It really feels like autumn's here, doesn't it? The weather has turned. Yeah, I mean, we're going for a knitted dress and boots. I mean, you wouldn't know it. I'm wearing shorts, so I'm like firmly in denial, but <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of here for freezing my butt off for a little bit longer, but it's um, it's kind of nice, isn't it, to get a bit cosier. Strictly started, which is officially the marker of autumn, isn't it? Are we watching it? Oh, do, do I like, no, I feel like now, after you've just told me about who's coming on the show, I will watch it. Yeah. I had Radio 1 on this morning, they were going through all the Strictly Everyone guests. Everyone talks so about feel, it, don't they? So you kind of then feel that. I feel like I need it. to, yeah, be You're watching saying, it. I've so never watched it before, but I feel like this year is my year. <laughs> to, to join. Wait, so all three of us haven't watched it before, but we are Shit. going to. I, 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 it's actually really unusual. Have you watched it? Oh, yeah, I bloody love it every really? year. It's like, oh, I don't know, something Do you watch it, it live or do you record it and then like catch up? Well, I tend to watch it on like a Sunday because obviously most okay. of the time I'm like, you're out on a Saturday night, but it's quite a nice cosy thing to do mm, on a Sunday. Yeah, it's very yeah, wholesome, sure. very feel good. And Angela Scanlon's on it as we just spoke about it before this mm-hmm. and I, don't know, I just feel like I'm really, I'm rooting for her yeah. this year. So anyway, we spoke about autumn. It's kind of that that period where people are starting to get a little bit sort of ill, get the lurgy. So Sarah, I'm, I'm coming to you because <laughs> as a nutritionist, you know what you're talking about with this. Is there anything we can be doing at this kind of time of year, eating wise, whatever, to prevent that happening? So it's a really big one. You'll probably open social media and see kind of like foods to boost the immune system on all these kind of like intriguing headlines where mm. you're like, I need this. You can't be your immune system. If you did, you'd actually be quite ill and you'd stay in a really relative balance. But what is really, really important is that nutrition does play a huge part in fueling your body and mm. supporting your immune system. So when I say like, when you look at your immune system, yes, you want to make sure we're having a variety of foods within our diet, as many colours as possible. It's something that's really, really important. And I really want to make it sexy. And I don't know how we do it. <laughs> but I really want to make fibre sexy. Because <laughs> it's kind of like the epicentre of our health. Yeah. Yeah, we just do not acknowledge it. And I'm like, and I will get to a point where we'll think it's very sexy and appealing. Mm. But the reason for it is, We've heard for the last 10 years, you know, Tim Spector, like the kind of god around the gut microbiome, he kind of brought it to the front of us. And for us, like, that is where our immunity is made. So if we have, you know, a, a poor gut health, basically, maybe we've got IBS or IBD, or maybe we just don't have any fiber within our diet, you know, we're going to have quite a sluggish gut. And that's where our immune cells are made. So when we're thinking about immunity we really want to start like at the core so not thinking about you know supplements and all that kind of thing just starting with our diet and Mm. not many of us get the recommended dose of fiber that we need so like 20 percent of the general population Mm. actually get the fiber intake that we need which is 30 grams a day so i say let's start there now autumn is an amazing time to do that because you've got all of these root vegetables that are coming into season so you want to be eating seasonally um, and it's more cheaper to eat seasonally as well Um, So getting those in, getting soups, getting stews, pulses, beans. We're going to talk about the blue zones in a minute. But (laughs) Dan Butner, who looked at the blue zones of the longest living people, I kind of said to him, what are your top five foods? And he was like, beans is the number one longevity thing. So get your chickpeas in, your legumes, like anything, butter beans, get them in packed full of fiber and protein, which is great. Um, And then you've got all your like autumnal greens that are coming in. So like your kale and your collard and your... um, cabbages like get them just chuck them into your shoes are they full of fiber full of fiber yeah. full of fiber mm-hmm. i imagine fiber, fiber which is great like fruit and fiber box of Not, so that's what you want to stay away from right okay. uh. just because it's you know it's 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 processed um and it's not that i'm demonizing processed foods but we want to be getting in those whole foods as yeah. much as possible mm-hmm. and so what that's going to be doing in the morning is yes it is full of fiber but it's also full of all the sugar so your mm. blood sugar glucose levels are going to be going up right. and down up and down you want to be avoiding that you don't want to completely flatline people get obsessed with flatlining we do have natural spikes within our day but when you think about and i'm going to get a bit sciencey but your postpandal response to food which is when you eat food what does your blood sugar and blood glucose do after you eat having something like that will rocket it up very quickly and then it will drop so you want to have something that's more sustaining so thinking about autumn 
oats is amazing. Um, and having kind of your jumbo big packed oats, not the milled ones because they make your blood glucose spike more so than the, the jumbo ones because oh, they're more processed. So having like your jumbo oats in the morning, um, it's warming, it makes you feel like you've got a hug in a bowl, but it is packed with fiber. Yeah. Chuck some flax seeds on there, packed full of fiber, put in a handful of blueberries. We know that that's I want to write this down. really yeah. good <laughs> with like your polyphenols and yeah, you'll be like ready to go. So I kind of think starting with like fiber, um, and whole balanced foods is kind of the way to really support your immune system going forward because you're basically supporting all your immune cells, which is like the core of where we need supporting our immunity. Mm. And then the second thing that is what I'm making sure I'm going to add into my diet as of October, so it's a public health recommendation, is vitamin D. And the reason why is because October to April, the UVA rays, which is what you get from the sun, aren't strong enough to penetrate our skin. And vitamin D is actually a hormone, it's not a vitamin. So even though it's called vitamin D, it's just how it was found um, in the vitamins when, many years ago. And so basically, because it's not strong enough to have that hormonal reaction, we can't create it. Mm. So we start depleting a lot during the winter, and that's a really important vitamin or hormone for um, our immunity. So all of our cells have vitamin D receptors on, which is why it's really, really important. Um, and especially if you're from ethnic minorities, having vitamin D all the way throughout the year is really important because you can't gain enough from our foods. Right. So we can get a bit from mushrooms, um, some from eggs and a little bit from fish, but you've got to eat a humongous amount just to mm. get your recommended daily allowance. Mm. So we want to be having just a vitamin and make sure when you do, my one tip in vitamin D is having it in the morning because it's a hormone it actually does create energy. Okay. So don't have it before you go to bed. How um, do you take it? As a drop? I use a spray and you can get um, different different ranges of vitamin D. Um, you kind of want 10 micrograms a day. That's the, the minimum limit that you want. I might just do one spray under the tongue as soon as I wake up in the morning. Um, okay. And then that's it. Because it's and, quite easy, that one. And what does that kind of contribute towards? What are the like, health benefits of vitamin D particularly? Immunity. Okay. Um, basically, vitamin D, as I said, like, every single cell in our body has a vitamin D receptor. So it basically works with everything. Right. So our mood, think about the, the SAD syndrome, seasonal affect disorder. It really starts to rise around now um, because people are starting to feel mm. the winter blues coming in. You know, the, the evenings are mm. getting like shorter. It's getting darker in the mornings. It's harder to wake up. Our circadian rhythm, which is linked to the sun, um, becomes a little bit adjusted because we're not having that, you know, 5 a.m. sunrise. Okay. Um, so having vitamin D is really, really important for SAD syndrome okay. as well and mental health. Right. Um, but basically any kind of, anything doing with health, vitamin D is okay. kind of at the epicenter for it, which is why it's really important. Bones, right. osteoporosis, okay. um, everything like that. So right, well, I'm going to leave go. this for the shopping list. Yeah, I know. I'm going to leave it and get <laughs> they some give it, they give it to kids. When kids are little, they give you... Yeah. Um, but I never really know what to do with it, so I sort of drop it in their porridge. Because of the rickets. Mornings, but so you think oh, about rickets, yeah. and that was a really, really big thing. Right. Um, yeah, so making sure you're also having it with calcium. That's why it's really important to have a balanced diet, because mm. when we think about the reason why we talk about supplements, especially for vitamin D, it's because we just can't gain it from our foods. Whereas predominantly, unless we're having more of a restricted diet, like a plant-based diet, where we will need to supplement, we should be trying to get as many nutrients from our food as possible, like the calciums and the zincs mm. and everything. Um, but it's when people start becoming more restrictive with their diet that we really need to hyper-focus on supplements. Um, but vitamin D is just the one thing that if we all eat a balanced diet, we still struggle to get because mm. it's from the sun. So yeah. that's one thing that's really, really important. Fascinating because stuff, isn't in it? In England, we just don't get enough sun. Oh, I know, it's a real shame, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of dialogue at the moment about kind of living longer, and you did mention blue zones briefly yeah. then. Um, tell me a bit more about that so i'm fascinated by the blue zone so i um so if no one's watched the netflix documentary i'm not sure how much t bus tv bus were here because we're like we don't watch tv <laughs> but i would definitely recommend going to watch live to 100 on netflix it's number one at the moment and it's this incredible reporter and journalist called dan butner who has basically in the last 20 years gone to look at centenarians all over the world and he's found these five areas that are called five blue zones that have the longest living centenarians and he's mm -hmm. basically gone to interview them talk to them look at all of their lifestyle and he's brought nine common denominators to life and he said it was even hard to bring these nine in but what do they all share what are their common values and so when you look at nutrition mostly plant-based all whole foods, they eat to 80% full. Um, but the, one of the biggest things is community that kind of came out of this. So actually being in, having three friends that you can turn to in times of stress or distress, um, eating together, even having kind of that um, 
common denominator with your family. So in Singapore, which is the brand new blue zone, they've kind of like started to infiltrate a lot of these techniques into mm. kind of a city because the other ones are very much kind of cut off from, you know, the Western world. Mm. Um, they've started to like basically give people money to have their families live at home with them. So rather than putting their elders into retirement homes, which we know actually reduces lifespan by seven mm. years, having them live within the family and they get tax benefits. And that just shows kind of the interconnection of community and having that there. Um, and even having things, you know, exercising with friends. He looks at all of these denominators. So it's basically winding down around 8 p.m., having lots of nuts in your diet, having lots of sweet potatoes, eating mindfully, eating mostly percent plant-based, um, mindful movement, none of them go to the gym, but are basically active all day right. um, and the flexibility. Um, also having a community and having purpose. And he talks about something called the Ikigai. I don't know if you've heard about the Ikigai. Heard of that, but it's, yeah. It's basically like, what is your kind of your purpose in life? And it's not like all of these people have this like huge thought process on what am I living for? But every day they've got a reason to get up, whether it's kind of like working with their community, volunteering, you know, keeping their house, you know, ship shape because that's kind of what they feel their purpose is. Yeah. And so every day they feel like they've got this purpose to live. And that was like also a really big common denominator that came out of it. Mm. So it's really fascinating that like when we're looking at health and like a big, like when we're, especially like longevity, you hear about people like Brian Johnson, who's trying to reverses aging by 365 days a year by spending two million pounds on all of these like health protocols. And you kind of look at his intensive routine and then you look at someone like Dan Buettner and his is way more simplified and actually we can all take parts of that and integrate it into our lives. Amazing. So um, I definitely recommend going to watch it or listen to yeah. the podcast, yeah. Live Well, Be Well, which oh. we had him on last week. For so. sure. Thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> uh, now on to a bit of fashion. India Cardona chats us through her key pieces for autumn, winter and how she styles them. Hi, I'm India Cardona and today I'm talking you through my key transitional pieces, which are going to take me from summer to autumn. We've got this oversized blazer. I am obsessed with this color tone. I have a bomber jacket in this color and I've worn it kind of all year round. And I feel like this blazer is just super versatile. Um, it's a small and actually it's already a really good oversized shape. And I feel like that's something I always look for in a blazer. And this green, you'll be surprised with how many things it actually goes with because you can pair it with lighter colors, darker colors, and it's something that you can dress up or down, wear for work, etc. Um, and I feel like this will be such a hard working piece. Now we're going to move on to some statement knits. This one is from Zara, but I think it looks so much more expensive than that. It's got loads of really gorgeous design details, such as the cinch waist, which will give just such beautiful structure. Um, it's got hidden seams as well, which I think makes it look really elevated and it's also got padded shoulders which is a really nice design detail kind of a nod to the 80s and just makes it a little bit more playful and exciting and this will look so gorgeous i think just paired with a cami and some jeans or a little skirt or you can just wear it without anything because it's got that button close as well next we've got this massimo duty cardigan jacket and a gorgeous bouquet i wish you guys could feel it because it feels like heaven um, Massimo Duty was huge last year. I know lots of the Sherlock girls had loads of gorgeous pieces and some of them actually had this jacket in a lighter tone and they brought out this gorgeous kind of neutral beigey grey for this season and I feel like it's going to sell out so quickly. This I think would look so gorgeous just with like straight leg jeans and ballet flats. Just that really kind of chic city girl look and it's also really cosy so it'll keep you warm too. Now I'm going to move on to some tops. This is from Ray, which is a brand by Matches. And I know it looks like a skirt, but it's actually a really gorgeous kind of trapeze bandeau top. Um, I've been getting a load of wear out of this and I'm excited to continue wearing it into the new season. Um, it's great if you want to still show off a late summer tan and it looks really cool paired with jeans. Um, I actually wore it with like a neck scarf recently, which I think is quite a nice design detail and also a trend that we're going to be seeing into the next season too. Um, because it's not tight, I also think that it looks like it's a much more sophisticated option compared to other bandos um, and it looks really elegant and it's definitely one that I've been wearing day and night. Now, you won't be surprised to see a shirt in here. I feel like a shirt is essential all year round. Um, this one is from Arket and I've actually got last year's version of it, but I really like how the black stripe on this one is kind of broken up because it makes it look a lot less harsh. 
Um, this is just a really nice piece for the autumn because it's got that black, so kind of bringing in those darker tones, but then because of the cream color, it's still kind of light and airy, which I feel like you really want in the autumn time. And I love wearing shirts, clothes open um, with a little tie. I feel like they're just so versatile. The next piece I've chosen, we're moving on to bottoms, are these amazing kind of oversized trousers from Ray as well. Um, you may well have seen Charlotte wearing these in the white, which I'm really lusting over. Um, but I thought I would get the black pair because of the versatility and especially as we move into the colder months too. These are really the perfect black trouser. They are more expensive, but I feel like I'm going to be wearing them pretty much every day for the rest of the year. Um, they've got this gorgeous kind of over exaggerated pleat um, and still really cinched on the waist so they just create a really gorgeous silhouette and because of the black as well I feel like obviously you can wear them for work you can wear them with ballet flats loafers etc they even look really cool with some sambas too but because of the black color it's perfect for nighttime as well with a little top um, I think it looks really cool with the ray top actually as well so these are an amazing staple to invest in so my final pick is this cutout Christopher Esbe dress. You've probably seen it in like lighter blues and some beigey tones. Um, there was even a gorgeous green, but I am in love with the chocolate. Chocolate is gonna be huge for the next season. And I feel like this dress, because it's still silky and it's got the cutout, it's a little bit sexy and still, you know, very wearable in the summer, but because of the darker tone, it's absolutely perfect for autumn and I will be surprised if you don't see people wearing this. Um, so you've got to get in there first. But yeah, it's so gorgeous and I feel like the cutout just makes it perfect for a show-stopping outfit. Before I go, I also want to talk about my outfit, which I feel like fits into the transitional category. So I've got these jeans from Alexander Wang. The turn-up is a big trend for the coming season and I love how it's got the logo. Again, a little nod to the 90s and these are a pair that I'm going to be wearing for months and months to come because they're a bit looser, they're still quite cool, not too hot um, and they're also going to be really hard working as we get into the later months. On my feet I've got some brown sandals from Rouge, um, I love the little check detail if you could see that and again brown's just a big colour for the next season. Um, my jacket obviously can't get away with not mentioning this so this is from sleeper they brought out the most beautiful jackets this comes in three different colors also in love with the black um, and i just love the kind of plissé detail the bows and obviously the feathers and these do actually detach as well so really great piece and the pink just makes it a little bit more fun more of a nod to the summer months um, but still perfect for autumn thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that i always love this time of year for getting into the new season having a bit of a rethink and refresh with your wardrobe. So I really hope that you have fun dressing for the colder months because I know I will. Wow, that sleeper jacket is so beautiful. I think I need one. Um, was there anything on that rail that caught your eye, Sarah? I loved the grey structured cardigan. Yeah, it was so nice. I've right? known you're like getting into autumn and you're like, oh, the knits come mm. out. Mm. Which love is, a cardigan. You love a cardigan. Very easy. Yeah, that's the one thing that, I mean, they all kind of stood out to me, the shirt. I also mm. loved, you also need a good shirt. And the oversized blazer, oversized blazer. Yeah. It's yeah. the ray trousers for me. I'm like, they're just a good pair of black trousers. I think everyone needs one. Um, speaking of fashion, Rachel, um, I'm going to come to you next. We're kind of knee deep in fashion month. Um, I'd love to ask you a bit about some key trends that you have picked up on the on the runways, the catwalks, and how are we going to make them wearable for ourselves? Um, well, I guess everybody's probably had a few marketing emails on quiet luxury, which seems mm. to be kind of the biggest talking point this season. Um, to me, quiet luxury is more than just kind of Sophia Ritchie tonal style. It's all about using those amazing, well-made basic pieces in your wardrobe and I guess updating your outfits with them and using styling tweaks to make something really beautiful come out. So, you know, it's about having that really well fitting white shirt that you can put with a mini skirt this season and it kind of just suddenly feels mm. updated. It's about um, really paired back beautiful simplicity, which I think, I mean, I think you're rocking that today. Oh, quite thank frankly. you. <laughs> Coming from you, that means a lot. <laughs> Um, and I also have really loved how there's this real wearability of it. So I don't know if you saw the Mumu runway from Autumn Winter mm -hmm. where they kind of
kind of came down in leggings and brogues with like hoodies and then beautifully fitting like tailored cashmere coats. And that to me is that ultimate quiet luxury because, you know, every piece is really well made. It's long lasting. It's beautiful, but it's done in such an easy casual style like I'm totally wearing that for the school run this whole winter <laughs> hoodie when it's raining cashmere coat because mm. it's chic um, and I think that really plays into this thing of buying well and mm. buying long lasting peace and I love that you know nothing's too trendy within that quiet luxury trend it's all pieces that you'll wear time and time again in different ways again there's also a color of the season my mm. grandma every year goes, what's the color of this season <laughs> what should I be buying it's like her I love your grandma yeah, she's that. very into yeah, it and she'll sweet. buy everything the same. <laughs> actually she'll rock it because it's red the season and it's yeah. about wearing it head to toe okay so really going for that kind of red on red and you know if it feels a little bit scary injecting a bit of burgundy in there to kind of tone it down a bit but um i don't know if you saw hayley bieber wearing that mega strapless yes. uh amano yeah, chavino dress so cool. um with justin when justin yeah. with his hoodie yeah. <laughs> but you know she she's such the epitome of like cult status mm. isn't she and, and kind yeah. of cult mm. cool um and she's rocking that even her even her lip gloss that was kind of about that red trend and that strawberry, strawberry, strawberry yeah. 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 So it's really filtered into everything, but um, you know, brands that historically have always done neutrals and blacks and whites on the runway for autumn winter did inject red, like the yeah. Row or yeah. Totem. Mm. Um, and they're imagining it paired back with all those neutrals. So it's not about wearing it with, it, we may have done in the past with like block colors and clashing pinks and things. It's actually about stepping it back doing it with the beiges with the blacks with the whites and keep and using treating red as almost like a neutral mm. have you ever worn red well i do you know what i've historically found it quite a difficult color to style because sometimes with black it can feel a bit harsh i think and i don't know um maybe with like that sort of tonal vibe i'm a bit like oh it's a it's a lot but i don't know i saw a few people at fashion week this weekend which is little injections of red and I don't know I think I could be convinced so well, you've nails. got red nails I'm down for a red nail <laughs> yeah I like my take on red um but yeah I think I don't know stranger things have happened I'm sure I'll end up convinced um and, and not buying it but yeah it's a cool color um is there anything on your autumn wish list at the moment yeah there's so much on my autumn <laughs> wish list do you make a wish list at the beginning of the season? Oh, God, yeah. Like, I Love have that. on my notes, like, just pages and pages. And then on my birthday, I'm like, I don't know what I want for my birthday. I've got nothing. <laughs> um, I have a lot. These were on my wish list, these shoes. Oh, a moment Love for the shoes. A moment. I don't know where if are they from? from the camera. They're from Alaya. Amazing. Um, and I was one of those people on the website, like, refreshing for about... Yeah. six weeks um, to get them but these are very comfortable and I always believe in buying quality yeah um, they'll probably last and they'll last a long time and then my daughters will have them one day in the future so yeah um, and then Mew Mew have done the most amazing kitten heel they're sold out everywhere which is a real pain already but they're a kind of kitten heel with lots of little strappy buckles and they're so 90s and they're so cool, so cool. Mm. and Mango have duped those as well yes. um, and they've done them in red so if anyone's buying into ah. the red trend that's your chance mm -hmm. um, I think a kitten heel is something that you can throw on with the most basic of outfits mm. and suddenly it's an update yeah, and you can wear it every day mm. right yeah because so i'm not really good with heels every day no neither am i please send me your wish list <laughs> jacket <laughs> jacket there's a jacket you can exchange notes guys. exactly <laughs> yeah big oversized jacket from ray which i am oh, yes loving so much it's quite an investment but again like i buy a jacket one year and i wear it for the next three mm -hmm. four five yeah, years I, do you also mm. for sure i, I feel I, like you could spend on a coat right yeah, yeah. And it will last as well. Yeah. And it's that kind of, it's the, it's the outfit. Like whatever's underneath yeah. doesn't really matter when you're wearing a really good coat. So yeah. um, I do always think shoes and coats and jackets are the best mm. place to spend your money. Completely. So Ray has this big leather jacket with shearling and it's very Oof. kind of like oversized and very cool. Ray is on matches, um, which I love. And I also still love, everybody last year was wearing those big kind of brown battered leather jackets oversized leather ones yeah. do you have one Polly um I don't actually but the one that you mentioned from Mango oh, yeah. is lush it's I love so how good. kind of like worn it looks so yeah, yeah I mean I'm such list. a coats hoarder so I have to get myself one of those I don't really have the room for it but. coats <laughs> are a really annoying thing to store as well so annoying it's like you need a you need a big space to have mm, I know I need like a coat. big coats wardrobe mm. just just my coats mainly but one day something to aspire to isn't it um and in terms of accessories what do you think will be the shoe and the bag style for the upcoming season um so I think with bags it's really interesting normally there's a cult bag right so there's a Bottega or there's a I don't know a Chanel that feels really kind of the bag of the moment and there are a few of those floating about but 
this is almost like the year of the understated bag, like the, the discreet bag, the mm. bag with no brand. And I think that's so exciting for all these new emerging bag brands that maybe have, have been in the shadows in the past. And actually this year they're able to be like, where are kind of a discreet, quiet, beautiful, mm. luxurious bag. So um, there's a brand, Esther Ekme, which is so beautiful. These large, oversized totes that are, um, you know, and, and they're it's still an investment because they're, they're good leather bags. They're about 400 pounds. But to me, that's the kind of money mm. that's worth investing in a beautiful, well-made mm. forever piece. Um, Pauline, Polen, Polen. Oh, Polen. Yes. Yes. I love well, those yeah. bags. They're so beautiful. They're, there's real kind of craftsmanship, good leather. Mm. Um, I always think like, buy good leather bags because they will last you. Yeah. Um, Totem's done some really nice bags and Totem's not necessarily a brand that I would go to in the past for bags, but again, they've done these really discreet, really beautifully mm. crafted bags in nice colors. And I mean, my absolute dream would be a row, the row kind of oversized oh, tote, yeah. which is so beautiful, but then, it's far too expensive for me. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Do? Nice. Dupe. Dupe. Yeah, maybe. Sure there'll be one around. Come on, Mango. Yeah. <laughs> but there's the thing. I think with a bag, you stay away from, you know, faux leather bags in the sense yeah, of true. because they don't last as long and the quality, they don't look as good when they wear. That's the yeah, difference. That's um, shoes wise, I mean, Miu Miu's really having a moment this season. I feel oh, like it's all about Miu Miu and their chunky, buckly boots. Yeah. Have you seen those? I have. Oh. I feel like it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because like, over the last couple of years, like it's been all about the like really heavy, chunky bit. But I feel like it's a bit sort of slightly slimmer this year, isn't it? But still quite buckly and edgy. Yes, and um, Kate have done some really yeah. beautiful, like slightly slimmer, um, a bit more of a almost a Western style, but not yeah. a cowboy boot, which I think is always really elevated. Mm. And um, was it uh, Arquette have also done this really gorgeous, like bur deep burgundy, sl you know, slightly slimmer on the leg, looks really mm. flattering with an outfit like this, where you kind of, you still get a bit of an ankle shape, which mm. balances out maybe an oversized outfit that you could be pairing it with. Mm. Um, but they're all on all on my wish list, of course. Yeah, well, there's plenty of inspo there for me. I feel like I've already bought quite a lot, but... Hey, my have you got your boots of the season already? No, I haven't, but I did buy these loafers, I love which they're great. Shows. My boyfriend hates, but that means it's a winner, right? 100%. <laughs> All about the man repellers. A hundred percent. Next up is more fashion with me. I really think the high street is nailing the new season, so take a look and see what's dropped at Zara. I popped in last week for a look at the store and a try on. There are some seriously good pieces. I am here outside the Zara store on Duke of York Square. One of my favorite Zaras, I think it's got a really good selection always and start of a new season. So I'm excited to go and see what we've got inside. I'm, I'm in the market for some like transitional pieces, maybe some bits for autumn that I can look forward to wearing once it gets a bit colder. Um, so should we go and see what's inside? <music> I'm obsessed with this. I feel like everyone remembers that viral Zara bomber that like sold out. I'm really digging a bomber now, actually. I think I'll have to try that on, nice. Oh, look at those ballet flats. They're like boucle, but then they've got the kind of menu ties, which are so on trend right now, do you reckon? Yeah, really cute. So I have a pair of Zara faux leather trousers. I bought maybe like, yeah, last year, two years ago, and I've worn them so much, they're a really good fit, and I'm really digging this shape. Would look really good with that bomber, I think, so let's give them a go, see how they feel. I'm really vibing this whole look, actually, like with the shirt, that light wash denim, so nice. I feel like, again, bombers, leather bombers are having a real moment, especially ones with this kind of like, I don't know, the slightly different neckline. That's so cool, isn't it? So I'm not entirely convinced by this little tie detail, to be honest, but I'm like really digging the wash and the shape. So we'll look past this and see how it looks. Oversized vibes. I've got a Frankie Shock one that's like, that I wear on repeat and get a lot of questions about. And that looks to be almost the same. 59.99, bargain. This style trouser, I mean, those are obviously a bit too small for me, but this is gonna be big. And if you're looking for an alternative to jeans, really nice, and they're like 30 quid. Yeah, lots of different colors to choose from, brown, black, sort of stone color, but I think khaki would be my top choice. Um, let's talk about these mannequins, as they look really cool. Um, for 
work, I think as we're going into autumn winter, like a waistcoat suit with matching trousers. So nice. I think you could put like a, sh a white shirt underneath or maybe even just a white t-shirt. Like such a cool look, maybe a bit of like, like a gold chain around the neck. Real nice. So it's really drawn to this waistcoat, particularly because the neckline is a little bit higher. It does come with a matching skirt, which I am not sure about personally, but with like some pinstripe trousers or like mix and match, maybe like a white pair or a gray pair or a navy pair. Super cool, really bad. Another very good pair of jeans. Do you know what? I do think that Zara just does some of the best jeans on the high street. It's so affordable. And that wash is just so good, quite vintagey. I love that longer length and I find they last really well as well. Top tip though, like you don't need to wash your jeans nearly as often as you think you do. Just got to clean them and they last no longer. But like even that as a look, isn't it? Look at that coat, that is so beautiful, isn't it? For high quality fabrics, that's 1943. It's also a little bit more premium. I love that. I'm really, really excited for like wearing coats again. Not too heavy either. So you could wear that like soonish. Not right now, it's still quite warm, but like how beautiful. Okay, that's coming with me. Oh. Can you imagine how cozy that's gonna be on a winter's morning? really into the shape of those smart trousers they're kind of like a balloon shape i think they look really cool with some loafers maybe a little sandal now or just some ballet flats or something if you're looking maybe to update your workwear with something a bit more exciting they're very nice let's try those oh they come in white and navy as well I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that maybe i'm slightly over the chunky ankle boot thing and i'm more into this shape which you can stomp around in, but has a little bit of a heel, but like comfortable enough for walking around all day in, but just gives you a little lift and makes you feel really elegant. Yeah, big fan of those. Again, something that you'll just wear on repeat and everyone needs a good like jumper that they can rely on and feel like really good and cozy in. And this one that's like kind of slouchy. Another really nice waistcoat, but like nips in at the waist this time. If that's Lawyer Jam, I think that's really flattering. And that looks very Bottega, doesn't it? Okay. I think I've got quite enough. Shall we go and try some bits on? <laughs> Hi! I mean, I'm really digging this outfit so much. You know when you like put something on and you're just like, yeah, I feel good. I feel like myself in this. It's like pinstriped, again, which I just think is really cool. And because it's navy, I don't know, a bit softer than black, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. I think it's really, really cool. Might have to take it home with me. I'm also really loving the jeans. They didn't have my usual size eight, so I went for a 10. Um, they are a bit big, but I kind of like how they fit. I don't know, a little bit slouchy, a little bit lower on the hip. The wash is just perfect. Props to Zara, great denim as per usual. Next one, bit of like workwear inspo. I think I'd probably just like pin it there or wear something underneath, like a shirt or a t-shirt or whatever. Um, this is a medium in the waistcoat. It is quite oversized, so I think maybe just go for the usual size in that. Um, same with the trousers. I do love how like slouchy they are. The length is great. I'm 5'7 for reference on the length. Um, it's just so cool. Love how oversized it is and fluid tailoring. It's just always such a winner. Maybe add some jewelry here. So cool. And I think these trousers would look good with a pair of trainers as well. So big fan. Okay, next one. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think I'm really digging this as a full look. 100% leather and such a good price for a, like a leather bomber like this. I love the utility detail, the way there's like no collar there. So you can layer things up like this. Maybe a little turtleneck would look quite good under this as well when it gets a bit colder. But the shirt as well, really cool. I like the long line. The jeans, despite me being not super keen on that tie detail initially, it means it's like easier to kind of decide how tight you want it around the waist. Can we talk about the shoes? They are such a good Prada Jeep. They're so cool, a really nice, like manageable heel height. Great for the evening as well. Big fan. I don't know how I'm going to leave any of this stuff because it's all so good. Time for some leather pants action. And yeah, I'm a big fan of the shape of these. As expected, they're a little bit wider, but I love how they hit just above the ankle so you can show off a shoe. Really flattering shape and 
quite nice like pocket detail there. They're really soft as well. I think these would be good for like for work as well as more casually. And the bomber is so good as well. This is a medium for size reference. So it is like a little bit oversized on me. So you could go for usual, I think, but um, it looks really premium. It feels kind of nice and warm. And I love these details here that just make it feel a little more elevated. But yeah, just such a good transitional jacket. I think the color, the sort of charcoal gray is what really sells it for me. Okay. Oh yeah, love the fit of these trousers. As I expected, they just look really cool. That kind of slightly like balloon fit and the button detail on the bottom. Like great one for work those, aren't they? With a pair of loafers and a jumper. Like this outfit is like quite simple, isn't it? But like proves that if you get good shapes with your staples, it just feels more interesting. Let's talk about the jumper. It's cashmere and I went for a size medium and it's super soft. It's not giving me any itch factor at the moment, which is great news. I do just think it's the perfect shade of gray as well, which will go with so many different things. If I were in a smart office, then this would definitely be the kind of thing I would wear. Maybe a little blazer thrown over the top. Get your hands on this, it's lush. Okay, I mean, oh beautiful coat loving this raw edge detail makes it feel i don't know different to the norm and just really chic love the big pockets going on here i know it's really specific but like i love the way that the tie around the waist is like looks like this um something about that i think maybe i saw an anina bing coat like last year that had a similar thing and i just thought it looked really chic obviously you know a white coat is not the most practical choice but it does look flipping cool doesn't it it's a nice like in-between weight, which is good for like maybe not quite the depths of winter, but like certainly we'll see you through until like the start of winter, I think. And it just looks so freaking cool, so chic. Ugh, chef's kiss. Oh, that was so much fun. So many good bits in right now. Um, terrible for my bank balance, to be honest, because I'm gonna have to buy so many of them. Um, if I had to pick some favorites, think maybe the first pair of jeans and that waistcoat with the high neckline just like so so cool um i also love that other waistcoat set the slightly slouchier like matching set um just think that'd be so so nice for work also love the bomber jacket i mean it's just so hard to choose um the links to everything that i picked today will be in the show notes below um, let me know what you loved the most in the comments and you can shop all of the pieces and plenty more on zara's website Oh, that was so much fun. You really can't go wrong with Zara at the moment. Um, girls, are there any brands on the high street that you particularly love, Anissa? I love much? Arcot. Yes. I feel like their tailoring is amazing mm -hmm. and very flattering as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Rachel, you might, might tell Mango. Mango yeah. 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 Anyone else that you love? Um, and other stories. Yeah, good, so good kind of clean, simple basics. Yeah, and how about you, Sarah? I mean, I'm the same as you, Arcot. I mm. love it. I feel like every kind of two parts of the season I go in there and I'm like, these are my yeah. staples and that. And really good quality. As really well. good yeah. quality, really mm. good quality. Yeah. Nice, yeah, some goodies in there. Um, right, girls, you all have great mains on the sofa today. So I want to talk <laughs> about hair. Obviously we have the hair queen, Anissa, on the sofa oh, here. So I'd love to talk you through, well, I'd love you to talk me through actually, <laughs> um, your hair routine, um, because obviously you've such, got such gorgeous hair. Oh, it's grown so you. much, thank it's so you. thick and lustrous. Um, can you talk us a bit like how you how often you wash it, any products that you use? Um, I'd love to hear. How much time do you have? <laughs> so I wash my hair once a week, but that doesn't work for all hair types. Mm -hmm. That's not something I'd recommend for everyone. Um, finer hair needs to be washed more often, mm. for example. Um, but I wash it once a week. I only put heat on it once a week. I um, always use a scalp, um, scalp scrub once a week to really help um, the product build up because as well when you only wash it once a week though as you can imagine by the end of the week there's a lot of build up on there mm. i um use a shower filter to try and eliminate hard water okay which um before i used it you re you can really tell the difference that you don't really realize how much it's like building up um i oil my hair my lengths daily 
And that, again, that's not possible for all hair types, but I would recommend as much as your hair would allow to oil it, whether it's once in between washes or um, an overnight treatment or um, a mask before a pre-shampoo treatment. Mm. Um, I just launched my own hair care actually in July, very excitingly. Yeah, and exactly. we launched with a hair oil because that's my hero product. I feel like that's a product everyone should be using. And another thing I would recommend is sleeping with a silk cap. Um, I oh, found okay. such a difference with really? doing that. Yeah, it's um, silk pillowcase is also that's good. What I've got, I was like, what about that? Yeah. That's good, but that, this is even better. Okay. Because um, what I would do is all my lengths before I sleep, put on the silk cap and it's sort of like a treatment overnight and not just a few drops, you know, you don't want to oversaturate your hair unless you're doing the overnight treatment, which is something I also do. Um, yeah, it just reduces friction against your pillowcase. Your hair is smoother. It helps reduce frizz. Um, shine increases shine, so that is something. Do you tie I it up within the silk cap. No, you kind of just like um, like a not a tight bun, but you just like shove it in. You're not going to look your sexiest self, I will promise you that. <laughs> but it's worth it. Is it like a shower cap? Pretty much, but silk. Because. And every night. Every night. Okay. Every night. Okay. Yeah. So if you really do want to be your sexiest self, it is like quite hard. <laughs> you know, wait until you're comfortable with the. If you if you have a partner, it's not for a new relationship. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of like hair fall and breakage and stuff is, is would you say that's the number one thing to do or is there anything else that you can do to prevent that well hair fall and breakage um so there are a lot of um things that could be um contributing to this it could be you know lack of sleep it could be stress it could okay. be a change in hormones it could be there are a lot of things that contribute to that but i think the most important thing is um diet what you eat um that's the most important thing for healthy hair you mm. need to get your proteins your biotin your zinc um, your omega-3, your vitamins A to E. Um, these are all things, again, everything in moderation, like Sarah was saying earlier. And many things you mentioned, I was like, yeah, that's good for hair. Like your legumes, <laughs> your beans, you know, your kales, um, mm -hmm. egg, protein, protein, all of these things are just so important for healthy hair. So if you're going to start anywhere, it's ensuring you have a balanced diet. Mm. Um, supplements are also important when you feel like you don't, um, you're not getting enough of everything. But if hair fall is a very serious thing, I would... Um, recommend consoling your doctor because you could be lacking things you don't realize you are mm. um, but other things like um, using heat too often bleach dye um, basically stressing your hair out harsh products too much dry shampoo too much hairspray um, products with silicone and sulfate if you have finer hair it could not t be taking it too well right so it's just it's a range to to consider also like low level led light could help okay. with that but again you have to con to have a scalp consultation, see if your okay. your hair can actually take that. So there are many things that it's not just one answer. Yeah, mm. but um, it's a lifestyle. So when someone sure. says, "How do you have that hair?" It's I like can't you just commit. say one. You thing. commit yeah. to it. You have to commit to the cause. And like I do, you know what I found. I feel like I'm looking at your hair and obviously like fangirling it. Yeah. Um, is you were mentioning silk, the silk hair bands because I always and I still yeah. do it but I try not to it's like those kind of really like elasticated hair bands and I used to like rip my hair mm. and I used to be getting like all of these split ends like halfway up my hair and I'm looking at yours and I'm like you definitely don't no, use that's, those yeah, <laughs> I, ha I haven't used a headband with that that metal thing is your worst enemy never use yeah. that silk hair ties are the best ones to do another mm -hmm. thing to prevent breakage and hair fall is these tight hairstyles okay of course on occasion it's fine but it shouldn't be a daily thing because mm -hmm. it really strains um, the strands and also the hair tie on the ends so at home I always have my hair in a claw clip if I want it away because okay. it's um, less aggressive on the hair um, you see a claw clip it's best friend, or like <laughs> a silk scrunchie I knew you were coming <laughs> slip do great ones um, for silk scrunchies mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's a really good point, actually. Mm -hmm. Tight hairstyles. How often do you cut your hair? So, I actually forgot to mention this. So, before <laughs> I started getting into, like, hair care, it would have to be, I'd say, maybe every two to three months because of split ends. But ever since I started oiling the lengths, I go, like, eight, nine, ten months. Really? Because the, the, wow. they don't split and know. they don't break. Is it just the oil or it's the whole investment? A lot of... It's the... Masking once a week is also very important, but the whole, it's oiling really does help. Like even mm -hmm. once a night, if you can't do daily, the overnight treatment, it's just nourishing, prevents breakage, split ends, and it just strengthens the hair. Mm -hmm. And Celery, my brand, is the only one I've been using for a year and a half. And that's why I was so proud to launch it because I really stand by it and believe in it because mm -hmm. um, it's been two years in the making. So I was just like, I need to, you know, this is what I rave about. It has to be a product yeah. that I trust. 
Okay. Um, so um, get your oiling on, girls. Yeah. I, do, I think I oil my hair like four times a day because it's so dry. Too dry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, get I don't do that, but I am really fine. But like dry hair because I heat style it and I bleach it and things like that. Is it suitable for like fine and... All hair types. Okay. It's 100% natural, no silicones, no nasties. Okay. Um, I'm all about the most natural approach to healthier mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. And that's why I created it as well because I really struggled to find... What the oil gave me in other on other brands that were on the market so i just feel like it caters to the healthy gal that doesn't isn't all about you know harsh chemicals and intoxicating the hair mm. okay yeah. well i'm gonna have to snap that up i feel like i could do with a, a hair oil i actually in my brought life. you one <gasps> <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm literally searching for ways to make my hair a bit less. But you have beautiful shine. Thank you. I don't think I do, but that's very, nice. very kind of you to say. I'm doing my, I'm doing my best, you know. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Anissa. So much great takeaway from that. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you so much to Sarah, Rachel and Anissa, and of course, India. On next week's show, Louise is back with more fabulous guests, plus Lou Huff and Charlotte Collins do a Fashion Month Roundup. And we go behind the scenes with the team's first live podcast, which, fingers crossed, goes well. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do share and subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Goodbye. <laughs>